It, it is mainly a demonstration, very less of discussion. I, I just in, I'll introduce you to the terms, which are important to actually understand the papers which are which might be coming next, and uh, also to actually show you different kinds of rhythms which we, which can be played. I'll be uh, I mean to a major extent I'll focus on Carnatic music and uh, inputs on Hindustani music can be given either by Kasub or Swarnata Madam. So probably. Huh? Oh, Punita, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, so just uh, just stop me in case you you see anything uh, you 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 see anything which is not consistent with what you actually uh, have actually studied it. So I'll just shift there so that it it, it becomes easy for me. Uh, if you can handle the slides, thanks. I'll, yes, I'll, I'll take it later. I'll come see later. So uh, mainly the topics for today is uh, I'll just introduce you to concepts and a little bit of terminology, and I'll show you some basic examples of different talas, and uh, move on to performance practices, which is actually the main component because tala is just mathematics, and what is actually played in a performance is the actual music which is played there, and then show you some advanced examples which actually build on the framework of talas to actually suit a performance and a composition in the actual a context of a, a concert and then actually move on to some problems of interest from the technique from a technical point of view and i've kept it really very general the problems of interest it's it's really at a high level and then uh, your thoughts on that is are most welcome okay yeah uh, can we move on yeah that's Right. Uh, so the way we can probably define a tala is it's a very broad rhythmic structure, and it's not very specific to actually render and repeat music phrases, motifs, or improvisations. So it is at a very high level that we perceive have a tala, and anything which happens is at a level lower, which actually takes us to the tala being defined at multiple different time scales. The the perception of rhythm, we have a, a very high level uh, basic rhythm for the entire piece and then you go one level lower and then say okay these are the patterns which I'll be playing at a shorter interval. Then you go one level lower and then so you, you have multiple levels at which you can define rhythm and I'll show you different levels here and if you can move forward just a list of instruments most of you would have seen it. So. I mean, a tabla and pakwas are used in Hindustani music. The rest of them are used in Carnatic music, mainly. Uh, just go on. Yeah. Okay. So this is uh, what I call the three dimensions of rhythm in Carnatic music. Uh, I'll first focus on Carnatic music for a little while, and then move on to Hindustani music. Uh, so the the, the 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 tala is actually comes from the the quantity which is more I would say it's more philosophical in the sense of they say it's an inherent rhythm which is present in music and the way it manifests in front of you or the way we actually can see that is through a tala the original uh, manifestation of rhythm is called laya which is inherently present in uh, most of nature's processes so to say and in uh, ergo also in music but the way we actually uh, bring it forth to the audience and to the musician is through a tala. So a tala is a really broad structure which is a which can be perceived as a cycle, which is really long. Uh, in I'll show you different cycles where there are considerable amount of phrase changes and motif changes and a lot of perceivable changes which which can be seen at the end of every cycle. And uh, in Carnatic music, tala is actually shown as a visual cue to the audience and to the musicians and among the musicians on the stage uh, using visual cues which are typically using our hand and uh, using different angas. Angas are different ways of actually displaying in the cycle. So for example, I could take up a particular tala. So th there are different ways of showing it, mainly you have an accented beat and you have an unaccented uh, 
uh, similar to Akali. This is called uh, 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 Druta is the entire thing. This is just an Anudruta, and this is just uh, an empty without sound clap. And uh, the, we, we also have what is called a Laghu. Laghu is a beat followed by you count your fingers. And counting can go on and on, so it can keep going actually. It can go up to nine beats, which is you count your fingers twice, pretty much. Uh, so this is a this is a tala structure, and depending on the tala label, so to say, uh, it has a different structure. So for example, the most basic tala, which is a cycle of eight, is which called the adi tala, has this structure wherein it's split up into four plus two plus two, which is this one. 2 and 3 and 4 and then I move on 5 and 6 and 7 and 8. So this is the way I count. So the primary intention here is that since the Tala cycles are pretty long, when I have an 8 beat cycle, it is little difficult if I have to show it to the audience and to everybody, uh, if I have to uh, count it in a, in a way that I, it's w the easiest way to do it is this eight times so which is really hard because I need to know where exactly I am in the Tala cycle so one of the ways which was devised uh, was this this also has another connotation to which I'll uh, in the sense of different Talas have different variants in which uh, depending on the number of counts you have on your finger the Tala is the Tala changes so it's in a way instead of counting eight if I have to count nine what I would do is one two three, four, and five, and then six, seven, eight, and nine. So this is just counts nine instead of eight. So in, so we have specific definitions for each of these, and uh, these actually define different talas. Uh, so in, on the next page, I'll show you different examples. No, uh, so the next aspect is called a nade. Nade, so we have a tala, so let's call uh, for our practical purposes here, let's call these beats. So, uh, for the example I gave you, the Adi Tala, which is a cycle of eight beats. So, the Nade actually, or uh, Gati, defines the substructure of this particular beat. So, uh, the subbeat structure of what I'll be playing or what the composition actually is set in is decided by the Nade at the subbeat level. So, this is one level lower, this is subbeat. Whereas a tala is supra beat or so to say uh, a long term structure wherein there are eight beats in a cycle with each beat having three notes or four strokes or five notes or depending on the nade which is present. And the third factor is, is called a kala. Kala is just a tempo multiplying factor in which I would say so this is my tala with eight beats. Where and I have divided a beat into three strokes, but uh, the three strokes need not be just three, it could be a six or a twelve. It's a multiplying factor. And that is what defines a kala. And kala can change over, co over the composition and it often changes. And uh, even among the single cycle, the kala changes. The first four beats I'll play it on the Madhyama kala or the, uh, or the most the usual kala then the for the next four beats i'll double up the tempo and then play it at the next higher speed so the the last component i don't particularly include it into the dimensions because the last component is more of a convenience and it it is not present in the signal as such so the tala can actually be seen in the signal i mean seen in the audio but a graha or an edupu which is the syncopation it cannot be seen directly in the signal this is actually the face I would say of the composition so even though I have the tala to be this I don't have the composition exactly aligned to that I would have it start earlier or later depending on the composition essentially or it, it's usually done for ornamentation purposes or to actually show different kinds of rhythm wherein you can go off beat and then join in and then come back to the cycle yeah, uh, I'll give you an example of that as well. So these are different terms. Uh, this might be an overload of information, but just to. 
I, I'll show you here. Here, I, I actually define all of those. Yeah. So instead of one, you double up actually. Hmm. Yes. Um, no, it's not just one and a half. It is. It's also. What do you mean by kala is? Uh, a multiplying factor. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven one so it, it's this one two three four five six seven eight 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 so, so that's the double double factor what's color I don't know okay okay that's yeah yeah and I got that three counts instead of so uh, so actually that's that's an array no no that that's that's actually a color <laughs> you, you, you don't usually, uh, yeah. So the, the 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 entire premise of Carnatic music is based on these cycles, and the way you count them actually decides which tala it is, and the whole structure is so flexible that we can incorporate a lot of changes within the framework of tala. So a nine beat cycle can be played and as three into three or six plus three or a whole lot of things. And uh, so let, let's, let's just get back to this. Uh, this will actually clear up a lot of things. And then when I go to a demonstration, I'll, I can show you all of these so that you'll get a feel of what it is. Uh, so every tala has, a, has what is called a sama or sum in Hindustani music, which is the beginning of the cycle, which is quite important because that is the place where we'll see the maximum accent and the phrase change or most of the things, unless there is a there's a small phase to the composition. Uh, let, let me give you an example for phase because it, it, it might actually clear up some things. Say uh, a phase for a composition is used for mainly convenience. For certain compositions, the syllables, if they do not fall on the beat, it might be a little difficult for the singer to actually sing it, which makes it a little harder. So say, for example, can you sing Raghuvam Shasada with six letter Eduku? So it starts after six beats. Six letters. One, Six. one, two. So if I actually had to sing this on the beat, I, it would be Raghu Vamsa Sudham Budhi Chandra Shri. It's difficult. So if I actually give a face to it, Akita Raghu Vamsa Sudham Budhi Chandra Shri. So all the syllables actually fall on the beat. And this is the structure of the composition. So it's a structure that is like tat tat tam tat tam tat tat tam. Raghu Vamsa Sudham Budhi Chandra. So it starts when it starts after six. The structure is maintained, and it doesn't sound out of place. Whereas when you have to start this this kind of structure of words. So most of the compositions are actually based uh, heavily on the tala. So so uh, it's very natural to have this kind of a phase for uh, different compositions. No, for everything actually. Yes, the entire. Uh, no, you don't have to. It's just convenient that you do it here. In this case, you can still sing it directly from the from uh, sama to sama. The phrase every time starts after six letters. Uh, no, it's, it's just for convenience. So, so what I'm saying is, if you don't actually see someone actually giving a visual cue and just listen to this song, 
it is still an 8 8 cycle uh, i mean 8 bit cycle everything is still there except that if you want to follow it as using a visual queue you need to give it a face so that it becomes easier for you to actually show the visual queue yeah. yeah i know so that is why i i say that it's no, not no, exactly no, 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 no. whole Kitana structure has to be at that structure after 6. Something uh, that's really phenomenal that Tagra has added. These people, they, like, even Dikshitar has some, so when in Tagra just started it from <coughs> Anupallavi itself, from the starting of the song itself. These people have a progression. They start on the song, the next Anupallavi will be after exactly. 4 beats, the Charnam will be after 6 beats. So that depends on the composer's uh, uh, creative. So, yeah. So, so I have actually touched upon most of these here. Uh, an akshara is actually a note or a stroke. We'll define all cycles in terms of the number of aksharas which are present. So we can call it strokes for ease here. And the angas are actually to traverse through the visual uh, cue for the tala so that it's easy for the musician and for the audience to actually get the tala. And uh, kala is vilamba is the slow tempo, madhyama and tibra. I'll, uh, yeah, they are doubling up of tempos, and then the edupu is atita or anagata. Adita is actually you can start before the sama actually starts, or anagata you could start later, just like the way he did it. It was later; it started after the the cycle had already started the composition. And uh, what what's usually uh, the rhythmic phrases which we play on the mudangam, and also in dance mainly are called solkatus which are very similar to tabla bowls and they are onomatopoeic which means it actually sounds like you are playing the mridangam when you actually talk speak them and there is a vocal art form which is called gonakol which is based out of this in which you actually the percussion there is your voice and uh, you speak out different syllables and then make percussive music out of it and uh, so we have different kinds of rhythmic phrases and when I say rhythmic phrases, they need not be played on the mridangam, they could be sung and they could have uh, swaras and they could have mridangam syllables and both of them both of them go hand in hand and the, the mainly the, the phrases which are played on the mridangam are, uh, are the ones listed there. Uh, there are cyclic forms which actually start at a cycle beginning, end at the end of the cycle and there are acyclic forms which actually start somewhere in the middle and then they are used to end the cycle. So these are mainly used as I would say they are actually the ones which complete the particular composition. So if there is a composition going on, if the phrase is about to end, I would end it with an acyclic form starting somewhere in the middle of the cycle. Or if I am actually starting out with the composition, I would play a cyclic form which goes on and on as long as the phrase goes on, as long as the, as soon as the, the stanza or the song ends, I would go shift to an acyclic form and then stop it there. I will give you an example of that as well. And uh, uh, rest of the terms I will show you during the demo. So, uh, next. Ma uh, akshara is actually a time unit, a solkatu is a syllable. So, it is a matra, akshara is a matra. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, can you can you so here? Uh, okay. So this this is the slide wherein we can actually understand a lot more about talas. So as I said, a tala is defined by its cycle period, which is which actually says the number of beats in the cycle, which I have listed there as p, and it's defined by the nade. The nade actually defines the number of aksharas which are present within each beat, which is called the small n there. And uh, the total number of aksharas per cycle is decided based on the kala also. Kala actually doubles up the number of aksharas every time you multiply. And totally you can calculate the total aksharas in a cycle as n capital N to be n k p. So this is a kind of so if I, I give an example of Adi Itala, which is an 8 cycle, 8 beat cycle, which if you actually play it in the Tishranade, 
which in which the counting would be 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 so this is the counting i'll do in which case it would it becomes 3 into 8 24 this is for the kala which is the vilambita kala if i actually double up the kala it becomes 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 and it it doubles up so based on the number of letters which are there in the uh, entire cycle i will choose the different types of rhythmic phrases i'll be playing and depending on the composition which is uh, being actually sung the 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 rhythmic accompaniment would actually choose the different phrases to be played there and uh, different nadais have different rhythmic phrases which we play and different sets of uh, swaras which are actually sung in the particular composition uh, so if we understand this probably we can look at some examples now uh, so i so i don't think you need an introduction to the mridangam it it's just a, it's a two sided drum whereas where the left side is a bass and and the right side is actually tuned to the tonic let me switch it on first so the way you choose a tala is i mean the composer chooses a tala of course but uh, there are different things where you which you can do there uh, so there are basically as they were telling five different jatis jatis are different forms in which a particular tala can be set in there are five different jatis and that as we saw there are hmm? lagu changes yes so uh, and uh, you could have different nades there are five different nades a triple meter a quadruple meter a pentuple meter a septuple meter and a nonuple meter essentially i'll show you all of those here and there is a kala so a, a tala would be chosen based on all these factors and uh, so a, a particular jati a particular tala label would have a particular way of actually showing it and there are seven such basic talas so seven have each of them have five different forms which can be played in five different nadais so it's five into five into seven it, which, which comes to pretty much like 175 and talas which can be normally played but uh, as we can see uh, if you can go back one slide there are mainly these four uh, talas which are often played uh, one is the adi tala which i already showed you and it's played in both a chaturasha nade which is a quadruple meter quadruple sub beat structure and a triple sub beat structure uh, both of them which i showed and uh, there's a rupaka tala which is a three beat cycle it is counted this way one two three so if i actually play this in chaturasha actual rupaka yeah actual rupaka tala is a six speed cycle the rupaka two which is shown there it starts this way one two three four five six so this is the beat structure if i actually play this in chaturashra it would be one two three four 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 so that's 24 aksharas in a particular cycle and uh, Khanda Nade would go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And uh, so on, Mishra Nade would go the same way. And uh, the, there are two, I would say, it, there are different forms of uh, the original 175 Talas. These two, which are most popularly used, they are uh, Mishra Chapu and Khanda Chapu, they are odd meter Talas, in which uh, Mishra Chapu has 14 letters in the cycle. In a way, it's a form of seven. Uh, the way I would count it is usually to split it up into three and four, in which I would say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This, this is an easier way to count it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So it's it's fourteen letters. And Kanda Chapo is again five. Uh, it it has ten letters essentially. Uh, the way you count that is. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that's the way you count Khanda Chapu. It's not exactly a tala, it's, it's just a way of actually counting something which is 5. 
So I could as well count that as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Instead of doing that, I just do it this way because it's a little more convenient to actually, if you, I mean, after a lot of practice, of course, it's a little more convenient to use this this form of the thala. Yeah, so. The way I subdivide does, does not change the tala, no. So you can have this one like 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, or 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, It's still called a 7 bit sign. So, okay. So the, the basic idea is as long as the cycle length remains the same and I, I mean I personally do not see any difference in the way you actually show it to the audience as long as the number of uh, the structure remains the same. This is one big point of difference between Martin and Tala. Yes, I'll, I'll actually come to that. There's one slide on actually which compares the two systems and then uh, yeah so Uh, so let me actually, so the, the most common rhythmic phrases which are played in each of these talas, uh, I'll take the most popular talas, Adi Tala is uh, an 8 beat cycle with 4 aksharas in each sub beat and uh, a theka is a slow form of exposition of the tala which is used when the composition is actually in its slow tempo. And a jati is an exactly the same kind of an exposition whereas it's a little faster and it's used on faster compositions. Typically what is done is a composition when it's introduced it's usually slow so you play start playing a teka and then you move on to a jati and uh, I'll actually show that and then see so this is for an aditala I if you can count with me it will be great. So it's just an 8 bit cycle. Huh? No I can manage I want everyone to actually put the tala. So you can follow Vignesh. Vignesh is pretty good at it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Or if however convenient, you can just count eight the way anybody. So you can count it in tintal kind of a rhythm. <laughs> okay. This is my metronome. So what I did there was to actually play 4, 4, 4 and then I on the last two beats I doubled up the tempo. So 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 this is an aditala teka if i want to play an aditala jati it's so just to contra just to contrast i'll play as one cycle of teka and then move on to a jati So I showed you a, a couple of jatis there actually. Uh, one is a four, 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 four kind of jati, and uh, so different forms of the same jati. And the jati is chosen based on the composition. So even the teka is chosen based on the composition. So just like the way I showed you this, I can change the teka also.
So in a way, I am instead of splitting it as four and four, I am splitting it as three plus two plus three. So that, that's another way of playing the same. So when I say four aksharas, four aksharas can be played as four aksharas. Four aksharas, or I can play. I'm just leaving out the second and the fourth letters, or I can play. So I'm leaving. I'm playing the first two and then leaving out the next two. So the the. Yeah. So the teka or jati which is chosen completely depends on the composition and uh, the way it's played uh, and the way composition goes on. And these rests which I sh actually showed you now, the rests they are called uh, corways or carways, and they are they are an integral part of the way we play it. So an eight can be played as four and four or a three and five with a three being a gap. You don't play anything there, but you just play. One, two, three. One, two, three. So the gap which I left, saying one, two, three, the, the three akshara pramanas of gap, that's called a carve. The, it need not be three; it could be two. And these are different ornaments you play. So if the composition starts off somewhere and then. So first time I played a three plus five, but the, now I played a two plus six at the end. So these are all different combinations which I've listed there as phrase combinations, which can be played. And uh, so that's the way an improvisation is done. Anurag, five and six. Yes. So five would be tadi ki na tom. Tadi ki na tom. So essentially we have the total number of letters in a cycle and uh, we are free to improvise within the framework of the cycle and uh, we, the re only restriction is that the Murthangam closely follows the composition which is being sung. As long as that restriction is met, uh, Murthangam is very free to improvise which actually leads to the whole point of a visual cue which is being necessary for me to play. Without a visual cue, I can still play it, but then uh, I would probably go wrong if I'm actually playing a three plus five. If there is nobody to actually tell me that there is an eight which has happened and then you should stop here, I would still go on. So that's the whole reason why you need a visual cue. So the, the cost of the visual cue, I mean the cost of uh, allowing you to totally freely improvise is that there is some timekeeper who is required for the entire song. So let me quickly show you uh, a jati for Rupaka Tala. Rupaka is a three beat cycle. It's, so it's this. One and two and three. So, so this is a Rupa Katala, which is a three beat cycle. I can split it up. It's, it has 12 letters totally in the cycle. So I can split it up as four plus four plus four or six plus six, just like the way I did it, or in R as three into four. So three into four would be this. In a way, this is an example of Tishranade, which is 
So, so there is a this thing, Rup, 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 this one, the same. So a four into three can be three into four. Uh, okay. So you can show it. That. Yeah. <laughs> The basic inherent structure is the same. Some people sing it like sung in Rupa Kadaram. Right. So, so that's that's Rupakadala. So uh, quickly, uh, Mishra Chapu is a seven beat cycle. I initially played as I, I, it's a signature kind of a phrase. Then I played a small little teka, and then I played a jati. <coughs> so just to show different ways of actually playing the same tala. And kanda chapo is again the same. Four plus two. Four plus six. Can you slow down? So this this can be split up into two plus three, which is what taka taketa taka taketa, or it could be tangutadi tangutadi tang. In which I doubled up and it, I played a jati instead of a teka. So, uh, so another. So let me show you all the nades very quickly. Uh, I'll take a four-bit cycle. For example, say let's take the ekatala, which is just one hit plus three fingers. It's a four beat cycle, pretty easy to follow. I'll play all the nades in the four beat cycle. So let's start with probably Chaturasha. So I initially played a Chaturashanade, then actually I shifted to a Tishanade, which has three beats or six beats, six letters per cycle. So, so I initially played. So, so that was a Takita Dingu. A Takita Dingu is a Korve again, which means it's a three plus three, which makes it six. So. Instead of that, I played a takita ding, a takita ding, a takita ding. So you fill up your, uh, instead of saying many syllables, or playing many syllables, you fill it up with a gap. Gap. That and then that gaps, the... Number. So, takita thang, 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 takita Don't say that, but give you a gap of three or three. So that so the way you actually combine these phrases give you that the kind of different groove feeling, so to say. 
So Takita Ding would give you a different groove feeling compared to Tangu Tadi Tangu. So both of them are actually same six letters and pretty much everything together. Yeah, so uh, a Kandanade would go this, this way. So initially I played dim ta dim 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 is again a five letter phrase which you can play it it has a lot of it it has a gap so dim ta dim has a gap and then I played taka 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 it's one two three four five one two three four five so so this is the way you play different nadai and different talas different nadais it's a kind of three dimensional kind of a space in which you can pick out a tala and then create a composition in that and then uh, have an accompaniment in that. So, yes. So you have your four Aditara. So you can say a four fours in a Tishra So essentially, in three. because you're saying four and three, <coughs> so come in three cycles. He's he's changing the nada essentially. It's just this way. Taka de na 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 taka de na. It's one two three four one two three four one two three. Four. It should sound nice. At the end of the day, it should sound nice. So, uh, can we move on? Little. Uh, okay. Yeah. I'll I'll do it actually. The final mukta is completely there. Uh, mukta doesn't ex exactly vary with the composition. Uh, it it I mean in a way if for. Uh, expert musicians actually uh, change it. The, 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 the short muktaam. Yeah, doesn't vary with composition. It's depending on the location. The short muktaam which we play at the end of the phrase. Very depends on the composition. Of course. Like at the end of the composition, what you play? Suppose you stop a composition. You have to play some. That's not a muktaam. It's a muktaam. That will vary with the composition of which is created. So uh, we have an unmetered alapna which exactly do not have, does not have a meter but has still has an inherent rhythm of course and uh, all compositions are set to a particular tala and a nadai and that defines the, the broad structure for the composition and within the composition there can be nadai changes or kala changes most likely 
Nade changes are rare, kala changes are pretty often, which means you initially start slowly. There are certain parts which, which you ring, sing really fast, double up the speed, then go back to the original uh, speed. Yes. The broads, the entire cycle and the subbeat structure is fixed. So, the way you divide the cycle is fixed? No. The way I divide the cycle is not fixed. The total number of letters in the tala is fixed. So when I say I am playing a composition in uh, uh, I mean that right so it's not fixed as such you know it no 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 it's it's not for him it is free completely free you just have to keep in mind that 32 weeks you can do whatever you want in that 32 weeks so that might be auto-sync, mathematically it is correct for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, the, so that's the second point there. Swara and Sahitya match the tala closely and the, what, whatever is played on the percussion also matches the Swara and Sahitya very closely. So that is to actually ensure uh, that it's actually musical rather than totally offbeat and uh, out of the... And, right. So let, let me actually give you a short example here, pretty fast. So just to, just to say, so do you know Varamulo Saki? I, 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 pardon my singing, my singing is really bad. But uh, so this is an example in which the, there's a particular Swara Prastara, which is a movement of notes and the way a Murdangis would actually follow it. So it really helps to actually know the composition beforehand. Uh, to actually play it, though there is a lot of scope for improvisation, the improvisation can be pretty close to the composition. So, example. Garre sanidani nissa nidapada dante dapama. So I, so I'm not singing to the Shruti. I can't go to G and then sing. So that's why I ask for your pardon actually. <laughs> I know. So this is a this is a short example in which. There is a, a 7, 3, 7, 3, 7 kind of a swara pattern here. A 7 letter followed by a 3 letter gap. So the way I would play it is. So, so I pretty much followed exactly what the swara pattern was. This, is, uh, this would happen only if I knew the composition before or if I anticipate what's coming next based on my mathematical skills, or oh, as soon as he plays a 7, to actually complete the cycle, he's going to play a 7, 3, 7, 3, 7. So if I can do this kind of a calculation on the spur of the moment, I can play it. Otherwise, I can still tick, stick to the original jati which I was playing, which would probably be this. And it would still fit the particular composition. So it, uh, it's up to the virtuosity and the expertise of the percussionist to actually do an accompaniment. And uh, let's move a little more quickly probably. So uh, the lead following which is the main task of the Murdangam is to actually it uses the visual cue from the main artist and uh, rhythmic accompaniment is not composed but on the spot improvisation based on the basic framework of the Tala. And uh, as I said there is no timekeeping responsibility so Murdangist is free to improvise and uh, the choice of syllables is in correlation with the swara and sahitya if the if the composition is actually pretty slow i would not choose to play a, sh a faster jati and uh, so it's it's like that and an acyclic form such as a muktaya muktaya is an acyclic form which begins somewhere in the middle of the cycle but takes you to the end of the cycle is played at the end of every phrase so this is an example muktaya That's the end of the phrase. So I was playing a jati and the, I knew that the phrase is going to end, so I would end it with a muktaya to actually give you a finishing touch. And uh, so the regions of melodic improvisation, the kalpana swaras, are most often matched by the madangis based on his or her virtuosity. And an expressive performance involves a mutual understanding between the lead and the accompaniment. And all the other accompaniments actually follow the madangam. Yeah, so that's. So who actually gives the uh, uh, time? Who's the? Uh, the lead artist usually keeps the time. Mm -hmm. uh, the lead artist, the the main melodic voice, the main voice 
actually keeps the time. It is. Yes. So. So he'll still. Uh, so th in that case, it's most of the time uh, complimentary. Yeah. So they'll use. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh. One Jira keeps it, uh, keeps the basic four or five or something that during bhajans, the Kamala is not that. Oh, for a concert, you're talking about that. That depends. Because when the Vrindavan is playing, the violence is free. So, so he, he or she wants to put the Kamala. And I think during the composition, uh, most of the time there are not uh, large scale, I mean, no, not drastic improvisations which are done so as to actually keep to the spirit of the composition, uh, so that uh, you don't go out of the, the the actual rhythm in the composition. He gets full freedom during his rhythm so after the new song. Yeah, so which is where most so of the things are used. So that, it is my responsibility to keep proper tala so that he can play properly. Well, if I put something wrong, you will be playing it right, even though it will still look like his mistake, so it's my responsibility. So it's a complex interplay between the lead musician and the accompaniment and the Tala framework allows for this kind of an improvisation. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll play a Tali Avatanam next. So, hmm? Oh yeah, I'm playing a Karupu actually, which is exactly that. So next. Uh, so this I covered it in the previous slide actually, just, just move on. So let's actually see a short Koropu. A Koropu is a short form in which we start out with longer cycles of playing and uh, it's, it typically uh, uh, becomes smaller and smaller and then everybody joins in and then it's played. It's typically played with multiple instruments so I'll use three voices here, one is the Mudangam and the other is the Morsing and I'll use my voice as a Konakol. Uh, artist <laughs> so there might be a small lag, a lag or there I might miss out please actually bear with that I just want to show this because this is a characteristic uh, way of actually playing it okay one cycle, <coughs> then you stop at half a. For, we play one cycle, I play for one cycle. So it's a duel? Then? Among the three musicians. I mean, it's a trial, okay. <laughs> it's not a duel, it's a competition. Yeah. So he plays one cycle, I play for one cycle. Then he plays for half cycle, I play for half cycle. Then he plays for quarter cycle, I play for quarter cycle. If you can subdivide it even more, you subdivide it even more. <laughs> and then you join. Then you continue, then play the whole thing. Then that is followed by something called a mohara. That is an embellishment and a four-way. That is a mathematical calculation to come to Which actually is shown there. The number of aksharas which I have actually shown there. So, so I, I can do it actually. You can just keep the tala. I have practiced this. So I'll, I'll be able to do it. <laughs> it's a rupaka and go a little slow so that I can switch between instruments faster. Then, then. Tataka de nataka de metaka jarno de meta de me de naku de meta de me de naku tarango de tad de tarango de tad de tarango de ta Tataka de nataka de metaka jar no dink at a dink at a taka dinner dink at a dink at a dink at a taka dinner dink. Takadina taka dinner top. Takadina taka dinner top. Takadina taka dinner. Dem, tad denna. Dem, tad denna. Tango, tad tad denna. Tango, tad tad denna. So. 
Good. Thanks. <laughs> no, that, that was just, uh, it's usually played among three musicians and this is played in a percussion solo wherein uh, each, our, each player would get uh, a limited amount of time to actually improvise and uh, the, the uh, accompanying instruments follow the mudangam. What I played on the mudangam, I actually spoke it out and then I played it on the morsing and then reduced the number of cycles and then ended it. Yeah. So, uh, one final example, this might be a little difficult to actually grasp directly, but if done in a proper way, it, it, it can show us uh, what exactly is the face of the muktaya. Actually, in case, in fact, I can uh, speak it out so that it's, it gets a little easier and then I'll play it quickly and then uh, we can move on uh, really quick. So this is uh, what is called a muktaya. I'll initially, so this is a, this is called a grand finale of uh, percussion solo, so, so to say, uh, wherein every instrument joins in and then uh, you play uh, something which is, uh, it, it's a long phrase which is played three times and then uh, you ensure no, that it comes back on the cycle at the end of the beat. So in a way, if you have your uh, 32 beat cycle, which is the plain Adi Talam, uh, it has 32 letters. And uh, if I actually uh, take four cycles of those, it comes to about 256 letters. And uh, if I add two so that I get a phase of two letters, it goes to 258 and then that I can divide it by three which comes to about 86 I would say. So if I place a long phrase for 86 letters and play it thrice, it would start on the sama which is the zeroth beat and then end a little two letters after the uh, after four cycles. So this is probably an example. Huh? Okay, yeah. so. I'll say it so that you can actually follow it later and then see that it really happens or I did not actually mess up and then don't go, did not go slow so that I ended up later. So, So, two letters off. <laughs> so, I started on beat and then ended two letters later. So this actually, if I if you notice it, it had a faster uh, initial phrase, which is which. If I I'll, I'll just play it first, quickly. Um,
so it had so i i left it at the idopo right the deng gena tanta yeah so if it had a two letter so 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 that is what i'll do if 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 at all he was actually singing raghuvamsha sudha and then he actually asked me to play the tani for that what i would do is to actually take a not 258 letters but i would play 250 260 letters so that i actually leave it 262 so that i actually leave it to him at the exact place where he left me so which is six letters no tani is don't end up so in oh some is not sacred so i mean this is this has a curious point here uh in the sense of uh, it's a it's a measure of uh, a percussionist uh, capabilities to actually play it not on the beat but from a sum to a nadupu like this from the vocal sum so from the tara sum to the song sum song sum song sum, song sum is six letters start. after the starting of the supreme scene for the song so yeah of course so there's a lead the lead is always the main thing the song is always the primary thing Uh, so again, uh, it's it's the same thing that I can't play uh, a Sankirtan or a RTP. Probably, I mean, I'm not trained that much. But uh, yeah, so so it's the basic ideas are still the same, except that so as long as you are within the framework of the Tala and your mathematics is right, uh, you'll end up being fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, I, I Chaturasya Tishra example. I just wanted to show it, but then it was already shown. So. so it, it's just this ah, i missed it okay so it, so it so it's i played four times and then i played that uh, four into four and then i switched to a uh, tishra nade which would have three letters and then three into four would still be well so so just that's just, just an example it's it's just an this is more of an ornament rather than uh, uh, so yes that's most it's done most of the time it's it's so for example uh, if you if you take uh, say a small common bhajan tamburi meeti dava or something like that uh, this kind of a nade variation is done towards the end to actually end the song in a totally different note note as in uh, totally different style rather than actually playing it in the original style so so these are all uh, just uh, for ornamentation and to increase the expressiveness of the performance so yeah so i am almost done actually did i overshoot i think i have by a large extent <laughs> uh, okay yeah i don't have uh, yeah gone so uh, there are i would say uh, terms which have same analogy probably Uh, uh, the avat sam matra vibhag or avatanam which is the cycle period sam sama and then matra is akshara vibhags or angas and the way uh, a tala is a tala is not exactly shown but when we learn to play a particular tal we learn it with the actual angas with a thali and a khali which are similar to the way we uh, which are which are pretty much i would say Co- complementary to the way it's counted in carnatic music and there are again cyclic forms which are which can be go, go over the entire cycle a theka prakar a lagi or a keda or a cyclic forms which are mukda or a tihai tihai is again whatever i played at the end the the one which played at the high speed three times so that it comes back to the sum uh the difference here be, being that since tabla has the time keeping responsibility during a composition uh tabla is uh, mostly plays a known theka or a prakar so that uh, the composition can go on and during an improvisation uh, the even though there is no visual cue the lead singer would actually prompt the tabla player to if i if i go wrong anywhere just stop me so that uh, the the it it, it it uh the lead singer would indicate the sum so that the tabla player can keep coming back to sum and then keep playing it so all this improvisation which i showed can also be done on the tabla and uh, much more actually uh, tabla improvisations are really beautiful major points of difference 
yeah uh, so can you move to the next uh, these are some media examples i don't want to show them because they are re they are really bad so i just want to say that there are midi tabla examples they don't even sound like tabla but so right so this is the slide i was talking about so similarities there is a chance of improvisation within the limits of course and percussion is tuned i have a tonic here and there is no absolute tempo in both systems of music and both share a system sim a similar kind of multi time scale kind of similarity wherein you can define hierarchical rhythms uh, the difference comes in terms of a tal definition itself wherein uh, hindustani tal is a little more specific and more precisely defined and a little less flexible because of the time keeping responsibilities which would mean a theka characterizes a uh, tal uh, so to say or a tal has an associated theka whereas a carnatic tala doesn't have an associated theka so there are re only recommended theka so i i can play at least eight different thekas in adi tala whereas uh, a teen tal would have a basic theka which everybody knows okay this is definitely teen tal and they they would move on from there so no uh huh yeah that's a skeleton yes during performance it might be that only two three silence is also played yes yeah no of course that's this the skeleton it's always there like in every part of the cycle yeah and not just that there are also many different tars in Yes, right. Then, tha tha. Tak tak tak. So that's why it's, I said it's more specific. So so. Tilwa Tilwa is again 16 beats. That's because of that the way it's divided. The way it's divided actually. changes the tala but the way it's divided is doesn't change the tala in carnatic music